In Yu-Gi-Oh, there is a lot of cards created to counter incredibly specific things, and not all of them are bad. Pulling the rug only counters effects if the monster uses them on their normal summon. And it was an incredibly useful counter trap card in the perfect circle monarch days. Soul Drain only counters cards that are already banished or in the graveyard, and yet it's good enough to be limited. The cards you'll see on this list also counter incredibly specific things, but are just either a little bit too specific or just really bad at what they do. So to start this off, at number 10, we'll have probably the most useful card on this list, and that's Smashing Horn. Smashing Horn has the effect of being able to negate the effects of a trap or monster card that itself has an effect which can negate a summons of a monster, and then destroys that card. What this card is useful in stopping is Solemn Warning, Strike, and Judgment, and also a few monsters like Lagia or Thunder King, which sounds pretty useful, right? All of those are pretty problem cards, and the Solemn Brigade is pretty commonly played. So what makes it bad? Well, Counter Counter also negates the Solemn Brigade, and is arguably more useful. Wiretap and Seven Tools of the Bandit also do the same, and both are infinitely more useful than Counter Counter. Its effect of also being able to stop a monster effect is situationally useful, but monsters who can negate summons are very rarely played nowadays, and most just destroy cards. You're better off just running one of the cards this card counters to stop monster effects. This is a classic case of a card that stops an incredibly specific thing that cards which exist and have come out since already do and do better. Number 9, Driving Snow and Gust. I'll put these two cards together because they both basically do the same thing. Both are essentially conditional MSTs. For Driving Snow, if one of your trap cards are destroyed by a card effect controlled by your opponent, you can then destroy one spell or trap card on the field. For Gust, if one of your spell cards is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can then destroy one or spell or trap card your opponent controls. Both cards have an incredibly specific activation requirement, requiring either a trap or spell being destroyed by only your opponent, so no activating it yourself, and then you get an MST. The reason it's so low on this list is because its activation requirement is something you might actually see in a normal game. Usually, people run cards that pop back row, and if you're playing a trap-heavy deck, it's not too hard to assume your opponent would destroy one of yours, and you'd get to use Driving Snow in retaliation. And its effect is useful. Destroying a spell a trap card is always good. But there are just so many cards that do what it does but better, and its effect isn't good enough to justify its activation requirement. Although, it might have been more useful back in the days when MST was limited to one, and people were calling for its permanent ban because they thought it was too strong. But in today's game, where MST isn't even played anymore because of power creep, these two cards are useless. Number 8, Ally of Justice Rudra. Now, Ally of Justice on a whole are all pretty terrible cards, and the archetype is based around countering light-type monsters. And some of them are pretty good at it. But I think Rudra is the worst of the bunch. You see, Rudra is a level 5 monster with 1900 attack. And its effect is that, if it battles a light-type monster, it gains 700 attack during the damage step only. Which will bump it up to 2600. Not half bad, right? Well, I mean, sure, 2600 is like the attack cap of level 5 to 6 monsters, and the same one that 3000 is the attack cap for monsters with a higher level than 7. In that, very few monsters in those level ranges have an attack that high and only very rarely do cards with that level go above the cap, and usually only with some kind of downside. But outside of its specific interaction, it's a 1900 beat stick that requires one tribute to be brought out, which is not good. If he somehow special summoned himself out, or a card in its archetype brought it out more easily, it might be better. But that's not the case. There is one good thing about it though, 
It is a level 5 machine type monster, which means it can be used as material for Cyber Dragon Nova and then ranked up into Cyber Dragon Infinity. Number 7, Trojan Blast. This card can only be activated when your opponent activates a card which basically steals one of your monsters, like with Brain Control, Creature Swap, or a Great Old Monster Effect, and then it allows you to destroy that monster and then inflict damage to your opponent equal to its attack. And hey, that kind of burn damage is hard to come by. Pretty much all cards that do burn damage equal to a monster's attack is on the ban list or has heavy restrictions, and this card falls into the latter category. So, in addition to its incredibly specific activation requirement, you're basically destroying one of your own monsters to do the burn damage. If you're running a burn deck, you're probably not going to have monsters in your deck that have a high enough attack stat for this to be useful. And in a normal deck that does play high attack monsters, you're not going to care about that burn damage. If anything, you're probably just going to want your monster back. So. It's both a very specific counter and not even a very good counter to the thing it does counter. You also can't activate the effect yourself, which makes it even more terrible. But I should probably add, this card is a lot more useful in Duel Links. You see, in Duel Links, Enemy Controller is probably the most played card in the game, and its effect to steal monsters is used sometimes. Plus, in Duel Links, players only have 4,000 life points, so the kind of burn damage this card does is actually a much bigger deal in that game. But even in Duel Links, where this card could realistically be activated regularly and its effect would be useful, you still don't see anyone playing it. Number 6, World Suppression. This card can only be activated when a field spell is activated and it will negate the effects of that field spell for the rest of that turn. So, how to explain why this card is bad? Well, you see, in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Field spell cards are actually very powerful, and there's even a handful on the ban list. So its activation requirement of your opponent playing a field spell is something you can expect to see pretty regularly. The only problem is that it only negates its effect for that one turn, and doesn't destroy it. So it's just inherently worse than generic spell or trap card removal, like MST. That being said, it can be activated pretty easily, and its effect, while not as good as MST, is still useful. Plus, it can be used on your own field spells, like if you want to activate a Seal of War Calcos without destroying your special summon monsters, which, hey, is a legitimate use for it. There are also three other trap cards with similar effects as World Suppression, but that negate other card effects like Continuous Spells, Continuous Traps, and Equip Cards. But I think of the four, World Suppression is probably the best, which isn't saying much. Number 5, Anti-Raigeki. This card can only be used when your opponent uses Raigeki, and when used, will protect your monsters and destroy your opponent's monsters instead. Now, this card is one of the few cards that specifically only counters one card, instead of a genre of cards like the previous ones on the list. But Raigeki is like the most used card in decks right now, and this counter effect is good, but also way too incredibly specific to realistically be run in a normal deck. It's also more useful than specific counter cards like White Hole, which only negates Dark Hole and its effect is just that only your monsters can't be destroyed by its effect, which basically is trying to say that it will only destroy your opponent's cards. But most people who use Dark Hole only use it when they have no monsters on the field anyway, or if they have cards out that they don't mind being destroyed. But Raigeki is commonly used even if the player has a full field of monsters, so an anti-Raigeki would be a lot more devastating than a white hole. Number 4, Transmigration Break. Any card that would be returned to the deck from the graveyard is removed from play instead. This card is basically a counter to the Transmigration Prophecy, which was on the ban list for the longest time. Because you see, 
The transmigration prophecy could be used to remove targets from the graveyard to counter effects like monster reborn, burning abyss, or artifact monster special summoning themselves, or to recycle easily spanned monsters like nimbles. And transmigration break doesn't exactly help you out if your opponent is using transmigration prophecy on you. It will just instead banish the cards, which is worst in most cases. It's only really useful to counter someone using cards like the Transmigration Prophecy on their own cards to recycle, like, their Nimbles or something, or if they're playing cards like Jar of Avarice, which most people don't do anyway. That being said, it's really good against Medulches, who shuffle themselves into the deck quite often. It's mainly this low on the list for being bad at countering what it was meant to counter. Number 3, Ring of Defense. This card reduces the effect damage you take from one trap to zero. It was basically designed to counter Ring of Destruction, and was used to set up an OTK with Ring of Destruction in the GX anime. Now, it does work on a whole host of other trap cards as well, and a lot of the best burn cards are trap cards, but it only works on one of them, when there are so many other anti-burn cards that work on everything and last the whole turn instead of just on one effect. And no one even really plays those cards either, when Trap Stun is usually the best counter to chain burn decks in general. Ring of Defense can be used on your own cards as well though, which means you can use it to bypass the side effects of cards, like Aegis of Gaia, which isn't very good either, because a lot of other better effect damage counter cards can also be used to bypass side effects of your own cards. It's just a useless card in general. Number 2, Exhausting Spell. Really hate spell counter decks ruining your day with all of their massive amounts of spell counters? Well, thanks to this card, you can now just wipe the field of all of those spell counters in an instant. Of course, there's also an upgraded version of this card called Counter Cleaner, which wipes the field of all counters in general, and not just one specific type like Exhausting Spell. And you know what? Surprisingly, Counter Cleaner never sees play. Turns out most decks that generate counters don't do so well, outside of Kaijus, who don't really use their counters anyway either. Especially not spell counter decks, which is one of the most restrictive types of counters to play with in the game, since a lot of the cards who can make them have limits to how many they can have on at a time. But if you just really want to stop a spell counter deck, I mean, I think counter cleaner would still probably be better, since you can use it during your turn as soon as you draw it. Although, it is a spell card itself, so it would probably just add a spell counter to some of those spell counter cards. So, Exhausting Spell does have the fact that it's a trap card as a benefit over Counter Cleaner, I guess. And number one will be a dual place with Call of the Grave and Call of Darkness. Call of the Grave can only be activated when your opponent activates Monster Reborn, and will negate the effects of the Monster Reborn. Call of Darkness has the effect of sending all monsters on the field restored with Monster Reborn to the graveyard. And also, Monster Reborn cannot be played as long as this card remains face up on the field. This is also the only card to call a special summon from the graveyard as Restored, which more or less just says something about how old the card is. Now, Monster Reborn is the only card to have two counter cards for it that list it by name specifically. And also, both of them are terrible. One only negates the activation, and the other one will send a monster to the graveyard, but essentially just negates the card, as well as locking you out of being able to use Monster Reborn. At least with the other specific counter cards, like anti Raigeki, you get a neat little bonus effect in addition to the negation. Same with Griffin Wing and Jar Robber, the two other specific card counters I didn't list in the video, mainly because the counter cards banned in the TCG. Griffin Wing negates Harpy's Feathers Duster, and then will do its effect to your opponent instead. Jar Robber negates Pot of Greed, and then allows you to draw a card. Both of those extra effects are good. The two Monster Reborn counter cards don't really do anything outside of negating Monster Reborn, and make them the worst of the worst when it comes to 
incredibly specific counter cards. And that's it for the video. I kind of want to start doing a new one of these every two weeks or so, so if you have any good ideas for similar topics, just let me know.